Those drums aren't aren't recorded. It's a plug-in. Can you believe it? I really, really love what Bogren Digital does. Actually, like sidebar, I always wanted to go and record a piece of music over at Fascination Street Studio in Sweden, and I think it's in Stockholm. I could be wrong about that. There's a couple. I know that much. Just because some of my idols have recorded there, like uh, Ishan and Opeth to say the least, so to get this drum plug-in from the gentleman over there at Bogren Digital is amazing. So preamble over, I did not get paid to do this video. I got sent the plug-in and I have been happily using it for a couple of months. I've been busy, so the video just took way too long, but it's amazing. I've been re recording songs like a maniac with this drum kit. It sounds fantastic. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did right now on my screen here. We have the session loaded up for the demo that you just heard. So, okay, here's the plugin in its gorgeous evilness and in its entirety. Looks like there's an evil tree in the background. I like uh, the evil tree with the Cthulhu eyeball. Um, and yeah, it sounds fantastic. This is just the drums isolated. And then I'm gonna tell you what I did. It sounds, ooh, I didn't have to do much, let me tell you. So in this kit, uh, you have a bunch of different presets. El Natural, Jens Party Pants, Mobile Pants, etc., etc. I usually gravitate towards the septic, <clears throat> uh, but in this case, I uh, went for the Yogurt Pants preset. Ridiculous names, hey? I love it. Um, but then I went into the mixer here and I did tweak some of these knobs. But before we get into that, look at what we've got. We've got two kick drums. We've got a whole bunch of toms. It's Crim's kit after all, right? It's an extreme metal kit. And we have some options here, right? As in none or the China or the crash or a couple of Chinas over here. So it's not going to give you option paralysis, which I find that Tune Track gives me that feeling. And I freak out and I take six months to make a drum kit. And sure, it's good, but I don't know. One of my favorite things about this plugin is the anti-machine gun functionality here. The anti-machine gun is obviously so that it sounds less like MIDI when you maybe have... When you have the kick drums going, right? So that's fantastic. I, I think that, I hope that that applies for the snares as well. And if it doesn't, then that might be a future update. Who knows, man? Who knows? If they applied the algorithm to the kick, then why wouldn't they apply it to the snare? Or maybe it's just applied to the whole kit so that nothing sounds samey. Because this sounds really great. I'm going to turn up my speakers here. Let's put it to the test. I'm going to go and solo all the kick drum things here. That's with anti-machine gun on. And that was it off. There seems to be something in the high end that makes me think, oh yeah, that is an alternate cake, take rather, an alternate cake. I would love a cake. It's an alternate take of the recording of the kick at this velocity, which isn't at 127, by the way. Yeah, fascinatingly enough, there seems to be something in the high end that's kind of making my ears feel it as if 
it's in front of me. This all being said, there is a sub and a trigger going on at the same time. So if we get rid of those, All right, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly what auto double kick is doing right now, and I don't usually go into reviews having read all of the manuals and everything like that. I wanna give you the perspective of, oh, Paul just sat down with the plug-in and this is what he got, in the same way that you might sit down, because I feel like most folks aren't reading manuals of how things work. Anyway, going into the mixer view here, you see quite a few different options which are really intriguing. So like, obviously pan. If you pan your kick drum, we should probably not not hang out, okay? That's weird, man. Or your snare, Jesus. Um, the toms being panned is, is interesting to me. I believe that the panning must reflect what they wanted it to sound like in the perfect scenario with the preset yogurt pants. What I remember doing is I increased the drive on the master tape and I think I messed a touch with the EQ to make everything kind of sit really nicely. But one thing that I'd really love to talk about with you folks, as this is now not only a channel about guitar playing, but it is about sound design and it is about mixing and plugins, is that automation is the best thing uh, since sliced bread. So what do I mean by automation? I mean, if I hit A in Logic here and I go into displaying what I did, you can see I've actually automated the volume of this fader here, it's called Room. Now, why would I do that? Well, an idea is that this song starts fairly, you know, straightforward. It's got this filtered guitar and then this high-end guitar right before the big double kick annihilation kind of thing and the, everything kicks in full tilt. I wanted to have the drum fill have more of that room sound and it feels really natural and it feels really aggressive this way as if you're in the room with the drummer. That's the idea, at least, of the room microphone. And I really love how that feels. So I actually automated this. And if you look at the logic screen, and I get rid of that, you can see how it goes up. I still have the kick drum going, my bad. Uh, but that's, that's the point of that. So with all the drums soloed, not just the kick drum for goodness sake, this is what that sounds like. Pay attention to the room. Fantastic. I love the way that that responds so naturally. And as you can see, I wasn't afraid of going, what is that, up another, how many more dB is that, man? Looks like I started just under zero and I went up to like five or six dB just looking at the plugin itself right now. And that's really like the, the gist of it. Honestly, folks, it's just such a responsive plug-in in the first place. It has parallel compression, it's got its verbs in there, a master EQ, a master tape, which, you know, arguably... It makes things arguably quite uh, aggressive. <laughs> Too much aggressive, maybe. But what's fascinating about that is if I do loop that section again. You can easily, easily see what a plugin is doing if it's on full blast, arguably, right? So the tone control there, think of it if you're a guitar player like an overdrive pedal, darker, brighter. Full stop, drive, grrr, obviously gain. The trim is so that you can kind of gain match it. So at a roughly there in terms of the drive knob, that's making me have to trim it down, meaning the volume, the trim has to come down a bit because it was just blasting a bit too hot for the mix. So that being said, the grooves, the next best thing about this, obviously you're seeing some buttons here like playback speed, half, full speed, double speed. <sighs> And at 210, oh my god. And obviously this is the play button. So for example, let's see here, double click. You get the point. One thing that I didn't like was this. Do you see what I'm trying to do with my mouse? I can't drag it onto the timeline, but what I need to do is drag MIDI. I don't actually want that in my tune get up. 
I don't like that. I would rather I would rather be able to drag it from both places. So that would be nice. But it's not the end of the world, obviously. And what I do like about it is this plugin might have a mixer inside of it, right? Where you've got all this stuff going on. It doesn't have a timeline in it. And I really personally dislike that about the Superior Drummer stuff. And I've been using Superior Drummer for arguably like 10, maybe 10 years now, roughly. Yeah, it's 2023. Yeah, at least 10 years. Oh, so I really want to say I very much appreciate the fact that I don't need to have to worry about another timeline inside of a timeline. I don't want to think about that stuff at all. Come on. So at the end of the day, folks, this is what we have. It's pretty simple. Panning pans. I'm not going to go through stuff that you don't care about. Width is interesting enough because overhead width, like you want it to be wide. Why would you want it to be mon? I don't get it. The compression is a compression. If you don't know how to hear compression, then that's also something to look into. So. Do you hear what's going on there? So with parallel compression and that mix knob that I just demonstrated there, you basically want to have it just dialed in enough where it's doing something for you as opposed to not. Parallel compression is, is basically like, Here's your signal, here's the compression. It's happening at the same time, right? Parallel, in parallel. And as you add in that mix, you're hearing more, let's say in this case, of the parallel compression going out of the master. Whereas without it, you're hearing a lot more subbiness, which, you know, unless you're routing everything from this plugin out into your session, where meaning like instead of it being master, you would you would start to route it out to like different buses in your logic or whatever session. You would basically have less con like you have less control in this way of using the plugin. But for people making demos, who gives a darn? I'm trying not to curse on YouTube. Apparently, they really restrict your reach. Mm. Pro tip. But uh, anyway, so you have a little bit less control like this, but for the sake of a demo, this is fantastic. This is a great pre-pro demo. I wouldn't need to bring more than this to a studio if I was to record this. That's fantastic. That's fine. So let's talk about ease of use. Other than this routing thing, which I blame um, Native Instruments for making it a little bit like, oh man, I really have to read to understand exactly how Contact does its routing. It's really obnoxious for me. I would say that this is probably one of the easiest drum kits I've ever used that sounds fantastic right out of the gate. Maybe partially because of the fact that these are very curated presets, but I don't think I changed much on yogurt pants. I'm going to screw everything up. There's yogurt pants again. You can hear us a little bit different. I engage that drive a little bit more. The mix is at the same spot. Like not too much has changed in the first place. And I would venture to say that if you were to sit down and write a, a piece of music with this, it would be one of the easiest things you could possibly do. It is very much a no-brainer plugin, and I really appreciate that about what Bogren Digital does. In the same vein, when they released their one knob plugin for guitar players, that was also a really fantastic demonstration of really you just need a knob. Uh, people have enough plugins in the first place to maybe have their favorite overdrive in front of it, or they could just plug in their overdrive from the guitar and then into their interface into the one knob and they would have that coloration they want. The other thing that they recently did with that plugin is remove the cabinet. That's a whole other ball game at that point because now you can use your own IRs, which is fantastic. IRs meaning cabinets, impulse responses. At the end of the day, what would I say this plugin is all about? It's about ease of use, sounding great out of the box with minimal tweaking to get it to work fantastically in a mix. Like I'm completely enamored with these drums. And I would say if you have the extra scratch, go and get this and don't look back. I'm really, really a big proponent of this plugin and I highly recommend it. Drop me a comment below in the comment box and let me know what you think of this plugin. Cheers.